Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about Refair Pack, and the citation is 2006 square brackets, England and Wales High Court, at page 3272. This is a very interesting case. It's a, a case that involves the commercial deployment of trusts, and therefore is important for us to consider in these early stages about the use of a trust. But also it's an interesting case because it involves the deployment of no less than three different types of trust, as we'll see. But first, the facts. As you can see, I'm joined by a hamper and with some biscuits and a bit of Christmas pudding. Uh, well, that's important because the facts in Reef Fair Pack are this. Basically, you had a group of customers who would put a small amount of money each week aside to save up for Christmas. So it was a, a method of saving up for a Christmas hamper or for vouchers that would allow these customers to buy uh, well, hampers or, or food or presents. So these customers would pay that money to agents and typically those agents were friends, relatives, um, etc. It wasn't the company directly that they paid money to. And that's an important point as you'll see. So, uh, in due course, you've guessed it, of course, the company goes into insolvent liquidation. It goes particularly into the procedure of administration. And the administrators of the company seek directions from the court, and in this instance it's Mr Justice Mann, for his view of how the monies that the customers had paid in, we might say, uh, but of course it's paid to the agents, as I've just said, um, how that money might be used in the administration. Should it, on the one hand, the money be available for the general body of creditors, or is that customer money imbued with some form of trust, which means that that value can be hoiked out of the company's estate and be reserved for those customers who've been saving up for their hampers. So the administrators go to the Chancery Division and ask for directions from Mr Justice Mann, guidance as to how they should proceed with this money. Well, he explores express trusts, resulting trusts and constructive trusts as possible ways in which the value can be earmarked for these prepaying customers, particularly those that have paid in the three days before the administration. And that administration, largely, the illiquidity had been caused by the parent company's own illiquidity of what was a very old business. Fairpack had been going for, for a substantial amount of time, I think it's over 40 years. So, in relation to those different trusts, Mann says this, in relation to the resulting trust, he, and it's analogous to a quist close trust with that other equity short that you've seen. With that resulting trust, so do the customers benefit where they paid in from the idea that the beneficial interest sits with them still because a specific purpose, namely the hamper acquisition, hasn't been carried out? Does that mean there's a resulting trust, like in the case of Quizclose, as we've seen with that purpose trust? He says no. And no, reluctantly. And that's because there was no requirement on either the agents or Fairpack, the company, to keep those funds separately. Well, what about a constructive trust? Would it be unconscionable for the company to keep the money in these circumstances? Would it be unfair? Or should it, particularly the three days before administration? So the directors, of course, have made a decision to pass into that procedure, but accepted money still. If they accept those monies, is that not unconscionable? Knowing eventually that once the company passes into administration, those funds that have been coming in will be available for the general body of creditors. Mr Justice Mann uh, says similarly that the constructive trust uh, cannot sit uh, in this instance. It does not succeed um, in terms of an argument. And that's because in terms of that three-day period and the payment into either agents or the company, but actually agents, 
the receipt of the time uh, when those agents got the money is hard to ascertain. There's not enough detail to be able to say when the customer's payments were made. So no resulting trust, no constructive trust. What about an express trust? Well, this here we're on stronger grounds, much stronger grounds, because of course, if it can be shown that the directors in some way manifested a sufficient intention to cause there to be a separate bank account whereby monies were paid in to protect those customers in the event of insolvency, then those customers may benefit. Uh, of course, they would no longer be creditors, customer creditors, they'd now be trust beneficiaries. And our authority for that proposition is, of course, Reed Kayford, where the arguments uh, such as I've just explained were successfully deployed. But again, here, and again, Mr Justice Mann makes this finding with uh, reluctance, there's insufficient evidence to adduce that there's been a, an express trust that's been set up in terms of separate bank accounts like Kayford uh, and sufficient documentation to be able to specify that that express trust operation has been carried through properly. So no resulting trust, no constructive trust, no express trust. Uh, I, I've used the term unhappily so far. We, Mr Justice Mann does make comment that whilst these trusts were not deployable in this instance, there's no reason why, there might, why they might not be in future cases, um, which is heartening for us because, of course, as we get to grips with these different species of trust, we'll see how they might be deployed in due course in the commercial context, but just generally as a matter of interest. So for those customers who paid, of course, their Christmas was a bit uh, less fun than it may have been because they paid in, but alas, the money was available only for the general body of creditors in which they could participate, of course, in any distribution. If there was any money left, but of course, it wouldn't be anywhere near the same amount as if they were trust beneficiaries getting the money um, directly outside the administration. So... They tried to be prudent, they tried to save Christmas, but alas, their money was lost, which uh, obviously uh, isn't really fun at all. So, I'm going to make a cup of tea and then break into these biscuits. Um, uh, uh, and on which point then, as I depart to the kettle, I bid you goodbye, enjoy reading Fair Pack and Mr Justice Man's Judgment. And from here, I will bid you goodbye. So, goodbye. <laughs>